Family Theater presents transcribed William Gargan and Gigi Perot. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents 10 O'Clock Scholar, starring Gigi Perot. To introduce the drama, here is your host, William Gargan. Thank you, Tony Lafrano. Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves peace for our families and peace for the world. Family Theatre urges you to pray, pray together as a family. And now to our drama, Ten O'Clock Scholar, starring Gigi Perot as Virginia. Miss Butler to see you, Mr. Carstairs. Uh, who? Miss mm. Judith Butler. She's the new truant officer. Oh, oh, yes, of course. Good morning, Mr. Carstairs. Hello, hello. Good, good, good morning, Miss Butler. Glad to have you with us. Sit down, won't you? Thank you. <laughs> oh, so you're our new truant officer. I hope to be. I must say you're a little uh, younger than the last one we had. Well, to tell the truth, this is my first assignment. Well, I've been principal here at Fairfield for 12 years, Miss Butler. And this was my first assignment. So you can see we don't have a very uh, a big uh, turnover. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Does that hold for truant officers too, Mr. Carstairs? <laughs> uh, well, frankly, no, Miss Butler, it doesn't. In fact, the woman who preceded you in this job lasted exactly three weeks. Three weeks? Well, the poor soul was going to pieces. Just wasn't cut out for such strenuous work. She's much better now, though, however. I fixed her up with a, a job upstate. Oh, doing what? Well, she's a guard in the women's house of correction. <laughs> you mean she finds that less strenuous than being a truant officer? Uh, and then being a truant officer here, Miss Butler. That's the difference. Here. But... This grade school is in one of the nicest parts of town. The children all seem to come from good families. The children, plural, are not the problem, Miss Butler. It's the child. One child? I use the word ch child loosely. <clears throat> she's, she's more of a, a, a small serpent. Mr. Carstairs! It's, well, it's true. Uh, Virginia Newman is uh, silent, and she's deadly. And she comes and she goes on padded feet. One little girl can so upset the routine of a whole school. Oh, don't underestimate this little girl, Miss Butler. Don't make that mistake. Why, this is incredible. Virginia Newman is incredible. But what does she do? She won't come to school. She won't. Doesn't. Wouldn't. Except in her own terms. How old is the girl? Well, according to her birth certificate, uh... Twelve. And what do you mean she won't come to school except on her own terms? Well, she shows up once a month to take examinations. And what's worse, she passes them all. <laughs> I've never heard of such a thing. Haven't you contacted her parents about this? Well, we've tried. Her father is a widower. Oh, he works as a newspaper reporter with his son. The job keeps him out at all hours. When we call the house, Virginia herself answers the phone and tells us she'll give her father the message when he comes in. <gasps> Oh, I tell you, it's just maddening. But hasn't anyone ever talked to the little girl herself? Uh, anyone? <laughs> she's gone through four truant offices already. Well, I take it she's not in school today. No, she's not due until Friday. What? Well, I mean, that's the date of our next monthly examinations. Miss Butler, I wish I could give you some advice that would help you in dealing with young Miss Nuisance, uh, Newman. But frankly... Mr. Carstairs, is it... It seems to me that perhaps if someone were to, to talk to her... <clears throat> talk to her? I mean, try to befriend her instead of trying to force the child. Now, look here, Miss Butler. You aren't dealing with any little run-of-the-mill truant. This is Virginia Newman we're after. Mr. Carstairs, don't excite yourself. She has the cunning of a fox, the resourcefulness of a mountain goat, the elusiveness of a lizard. <laughs> Mr. Carstairs... You make it sound as if I'm tracking a wild beast. But now you're getting the idea. <laughs> if you catch sight of her today, call me. I'll be here until five o'clock. Good morning. I'm Judith Butler. Does Virginia Newman live here? Virginia Newman? Yes. Uh-huh. She does live here? 
Virginia? Yes, yes. So does her father. They both live here. I see. Yeah, well, they call her father Rick. His real name's Richard. So was his father's. I see. Yeah, like I my wonder... mother and I, we had the same name, Genevieve. Same first name, you see. So they called me Jenny. Uh, my married name's Dobler. Um, is Virginia home? I'd like to talk to her. Virginia? Virginia Newman. Oh, of course she is, yes. This is where she lives. Is I live next door with my husband. Mr. Dobler. You know him? No. I, I'm the new truant officer, and I've come to find out why Virginia isn't in school. Are you a relative? Of whose? Of Virginia's. <laughs> oh, heavens no, child, no. I, I just come over to see she eats a good hot lunch every day. Well, I'd like to speak to the child, if I might. Well, come on in. Jenny! Yes, Mrs. Stobler? She's down in the basement. There's a lady here to see you. Says she's an air raid warden. Truant officer. Be right up. Truant officer? Well, fine lot of good you'd be in an air raid. There isn't going to be an air raid. Well, then what's all the excitement about? Yes, Mrs. Dobler? Oh, this lady wants to see you, honey. I think she's selling something. Hello. Hello, Virginia. I'm Miss Butler, the new truant officer. I'm very happy to know you. Won't you sit down? Uh, why, thank you. Mrs. Dobler, I'll be upstairs for a while if you want to go home and feed your goldfish now. Well, all right, Jenny. <laughs> If the Mr. Dobler calls, tell him I'm not here. Now, what can I do for you, Miss Butler? Why, I've come to see why you're not in school, dear. I'm the truant officer. I see. This your first assignment? Yes, and I think you and I ought to have a little talk. Well, it's 11.30 now. Yes, we can talk for a while. A while? Virginia, you don't seem to understand why I'm here. Oh, will you excuse me a minute? Of course. Hello? Yes, yes, Mrs. Roberts. Mm-hmm. I'll have four boys over there at three o'clock. Two to wash the car, two to trim the hedge. Yes. Let's see. Four boys, three hours apiece, total of 12 man hours at 60 cents an hour. That'll come to $7.20. No, you just make out a check to Virginia Newman Enterprises and mail it to me. Yes, I pay them. You see, I have to take out withholding tax. Yes, fine. Thank you, Mrs. Roberts. Bye. Now, where were we? We were talking about school, Virginia. Oh, yes. Now, Miss Butler, there's one thing I think you ought to know. I haven't anything against school. Why, some of my best friends go to school. <laughs> but I just can't spare the time. Can't spare the time? I'm awfully sorry. Will you excuse me, please? Of course. I wouldn't want to be found in restraint of trade. Hello? Yes, Mrs. Burris. Hasn't Tony delivered those eggs? Hi-ho. Very well, I'll deliver them myself in a few minutes. Two dozen eggs this time? All right. Mrs. Burris, have you heard any news yet? Well, now, just don't you worry. It isn't your fault, and everyone knows that. Sure, sure, I'll drop the eggs off myself. Right away. Bye. I take it egg peddling is another of your enterprises. Fresh egg peddling. I consider it more of a public service. Yes. Now, Virginia, Did about... you know who that was on the phone? Mrs. Burris, the mother of that man who held up the bank over in Willow Heights day before yesterday. Very interesting. Now, about your going He's to... been a source of grief to her for a long time. Speaking of sources of grief, Virginia... Yes? What do you think your father would say if he knew how much you were skipping school? I don't see any reason to bother Daddy with this. Oh, you don't? He's been very busy, especially the last few days. The papers had him covering the Burris case. You see, when Ralph escaped after he held up the bank, the police had an idea he might make for his mother's place here in town, to hide out, you know. Don't try to change the subject, Virginia. You ask about my father. So moving speedily to apprehend the fugitive, police threw a cordon around the Burris home. What? Well, that's how Daddy wrote it up in the paper, anyhow. What happened was they searched the place, but Ralph wasn't there, so they set up a stakeout. A what? A stakeout. Is that like a fish fry? No. <laughs> no, it's like guards all over the place, night and day, in case Ralph should show up. Dad's over there with him. Lots of other reporters, too, in case a story breaks. Very interesting. Now, about these absences from Miss school... Miss Butler, try to see this my way. Daddy's had to be both mother and father to me for a long time. If... Well, if you tell him I've been missing school, he'll think he's done a bad job. We wouldn't want him to think that, would we? Virginia, I... I know how you feel, but... I'm sure your daddy would rather face the truth now than find out... Oh, you out... wouldn't say that if you knew him. 
Uh, you don't know him, do you? No. I knew you wouldn't suggest such a thing if you did. Well, he's never been very well. Thin, stooped, small bones. I worry so. Even so, my dear, Decide I Decide to go- shock my... Well, I'd never forgive myself. Hiya! Where's my sweetheart? I brought some hamburgers home for lunch. Uh, hi. Oh, I didn't know you had company. Uh, yeah. This is, um, Miss Butler, Daddy. Well, it's a pleasure. But didn't you was just telling me about you, Mr. Newman? Oh, is that right? Uh, yes. All about the holdup in the paper and the story you wrote in the paper all about the holdup. I was telling her, have they caught him yet, Ralph? I was just talking to Mrs. Phone on the Burris about had they caught him yet, and she said... What's the matter, sweetheart? You look a little pale. Virginia, your father is a somewhat larger man than I imagined him to be. Well, yes, lots of other people have remarked about that. Of course, we gave him a big breakfast this morning. (laughs) You see, Miss Butler just dropped by to say she's with a school down the street where I go, you know. Oh, are you Jenny's teacher? Mr. Newman, I'm a truant officer. Your daughter has been to school only twice in the last three months. Jenny, is that true? Well, I I guess so, Daddy, but you see... Twice in three months? What have you been doing all that time? Oh, I've kept busy. I've got the egg root, my employment service... You told me you were handling those things after school. Well, you see, the actual work is done after school, but someone has to canvas the prospects and make all the arrangements. Young lady, tomorrow morning you go back to school. Now, you go to your room before I lose my temper. Yes, Daddy. Goodbye, Miss Butler. Goodbye, Virginia. It was certainly a pleasure to meet you. I don't think Virginia's going to be one of my stronger admirers. She hasn't got anyone to blame for this but herself. Except maybe me. Oh, it's not your fault. Well, I think I'd better be getting back to school. Yeah, I've got to get back over to the Burris place. Say, have you had any lunch yet? Well, I thought I'd pick up a sandwich on the way. Well, I've already picked up two sandwiches. If you don't mind hamburger. Oh, as a matter of fact, I I love hamburger, but... But what? Wasn't one of them for Virginia? Oh, that's right. Oh, maybe it'll do her good to go hungry for half an hour. It'll be longer than that, won't it? Oh, never fear. Mrs. Dobler's probably got a turkey in the oven for her. Spoils her to death. (laughs) Well, come on, we can eat while we're walking. But is that good for you? Well, I'm no expert, Miss Butler, but I've got a hunch it might turn out to be very good for me. (laughs) (laughs) You wanted to see me, Mr. Carstairs? Oh, Miss Butler! Yes, yes, indeed, I did. Young... Oh, come in, come in, come in, come in. Won't you sit down? Thank you. I want to congratulate you. That is the only word that comes to my lips. Congratulate. You mean about Virginia? It's astonishing. A full week, a full week, and the child hasn't missed a day of school. Well, I think we can safely say she's turned over a new leaf. I was watching her during recess this morning from my window here, and you know, she was behaving just like any average, normal child. She was playing games, she was talking with the other pupil. Oh, it was wonderful. (laughs) I wish I could take all the credit for it, Mr. Carstairs, but the truth is that Rick... I mean, Mr. Newman made it quite clear to Virginia that it was go back to school or else. Well, then let's say that you both deserve congratulations, eh? (laughs) Uh, You can pass that along to Mr. Newman when you see him tonight. All right. And what makes you so sure I will see him tonight? (laughs) Miss Butler, when a man of the world like Rick Newman begins to spend his evenings drinking milkshakes with a pretty young newcomer and making goo-goo eyes at her through the straws... (laughs) We know the end is near. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Carstairs, we, we've only known each other for a little over a week. Oh, yes, I'd say you're both pretty fast workers. <laughs> now, you must understand there's nothing definite. <laughs> you know, that's usually something the man says. And he goes right on saying it, even while he's marching up the aisle. <laughs> well, we have made a few tentative plans. Well, of course you have, and we all think it's wonderful. A man like Rick needs a wife. And, well, heaven knows, Virginia needs a woman's love. <laughs> oh, excuse me, please. Uh, uh, yes? Speaking. Yeah. Okay. What? No. Are you sure? Oh, yes. I knew it. I knew it was too good to last. Yes, right away. Mr. Carstairs, what's the matter? That little serpent. 
That, that, that goblin. What are you talking about? I'm talking about Virginia Newman. That's what I'm talking about. She didn't come back to school this afternoon. Why, I can't believe That was it. her teacher on the phone. Perhaps she's sick. Her sick? Oh, yes, sick. I'll give her something to be sick about. You get over to her house this minute. This minute, do you hear? Of course, yes, of course. And bring her back, dead or alive. <laughs> Miss Johnson, this is Virginia again. Has Dad come back to the city room yet? Well, will you ask him to call me here at home as soon as he comes in? Thanks. Bye. Almost quarter to two, Jenny. You know what your papa said about being late or missing school? But I can't go back until I tell him about Ralph Burris, Mrs. Dobler. I never heard such foolishness. How could you see Ralph peeking out a window at his mother's house if the police searched the place once and didn't find him? And they've been sort of guarding it ever since. But I did see him. He must have been there all the time, hiding up under the eaves of the roof or something. Well, then why not go over and tell the policeman they got standing out in front of the Burr's place? And ruin Daddy's chance for an exclusive story of the capture? He'd never forgive me. Well, he ain't likely to forgive you missing school, if I know anything. I knew there was something fishy about Mrs. Burris ordering two dozen eggs last week. Ralph was there all the time. That's why she wanted that extra dozen. Well... She don't want but one dozen this week. What? I say she don't want but one dozen this week. I've been taking your egg orders over the phone like you told me to while you was at school. Miss Burris phoned here this morning? Sure. So did a lot of others. Let's see, there was Miss Nielsen, old lady Barker. Holy smoke. And there was... If she's only ordering one dozen this week, that must mean Ralph won't be there. What? Means he's going to make a break for it any minute. Jenny, where are you going? Downstairs to get a dozen eggs for Mrs. Burris. As soon as Daddy calls you, tell him I went over there to stall Ralph. And tell him to hurry! What do you mean Virginia went to catch the bank robber? Well, that's what she told me to tell her Daddy, Miss Butler. Has Rick called yet? No. Where is the Burris place? Uh, two blocks over and one down. Gray house on the corner. If Mr. Newman does call, tell him I'll take care of Virginia until he gets home tonight. Just say there's been a mistake. You think I ought to say anything about the bank robber? Well, for heaven's sake, no. Virginia's in enough trouble as it is. Who is it? Mrs. Burris? Who's there? It's me, Mrs. Burris, Virginia. I brought over your eggs. Oh. Well, just leave them on the porch, honey. I'll get them later. Would you open the door a minute? I'd like to speak to you. Well, um, well, I'm busy now, dearie. Come by tomorrow. This is kind of important. It's about Ralph. What? What about Ralph? I saw him this morning. Why, you must be mistaken. No, I'm not. I saw him peeking out of one of the side windows here. Just a minute. Come inside. Come inside, dear, quick. Okay, Ma, I'll take care of it. Oh, Ralph, don't... I said I'd take care of it and I'll get back in the kitchen. Hiya, Ralph. Hiya. What do you mean, hiya? <laughs> oh, hiya, what's your name? I'm Virginia Newman. I just live around the corner. Uh, Newman, Newman, uh... Yeah, yeah, sounds familiar. It's a common name. Hey, what'd you come busting in here for? Were you trying to be cute? No. You're kind of a celebrity. I just wanted to get a good look at you. Celebrity, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anybody else know you come here? Well, I, I guess that policeman across the street saw me come in. I mean, anybody besides him. You make a peepout conky with this heater. Ralph, was that the front door? Yeah, now remember, Ma, whatever it is, you don't want anything. Who's there? Is that you, Mrs. Burris? Holy cats. Who is it? Yes? The truant officer. But you know you can get in trouble cutting school. I want you to send Virginia Newman out here this minute. Tell her she ain't here. Virginia isn't... Uh, isn't here. She... Mrs. Burris, I'm a truant officer. You aren't helping Virginia by lying for her. I just saw her go in the front door with my own eyes. Okay, Ma, let her in. This joint is getting awful crowded. <laughs> I don't mean to be difficult about this, Mrs. Burris, but I'm in charge... Shut up. Yeah, you make a peepil conky with the heater. <laughs> Look, you shut up, too. You, you're Ralph Burris. Yeah, and the news is sure getting around. <laughs> hey, Ma... Go get some of the clothesline out of the cellar. Ralph, please. Do like I tell you. And then bring the suitcase down from my room. Gonna make a break for it? Shut up. Virginia, don't talk to him. Yeah, don't talk to him. He makes me nervous. <laughs> I gotta think. Hey, Ma, hurry up with the clothesline. 
Don't worry, Miss Butler. I left word with Mrs. Dobler to tell Daddy where I went. All we have to do is stall Ralph until they get oh, here. Jenny, I've got some bad news uh, for hey, you. Hey, what are you two muttering about? Uh, I was just telling Miss Butler it's too bad about the money you stole from the bank. What do you mean, too bad? Don't hurt none of the folks here in town. The banks are short. Virginia, don't talk to him. Virginia, don't talk to him. <laughs> Look, the little lady could talk to me if I wanted to. Go ahead, go ahead, honey. Talk to me. What do you mean, too bad? I didn't mean the depositors. I was thinking it's too bad for you. Too bad for me? <laughs> oh, that's a picnic. This is all the clothesline I could find. All right, it'll do. Now, tie him up good. Oh, Ralph. Look, Ma, do like I tell you. You can let him go after I've lambed. You aren't going to try for a getaway before dark, are you? Honey, will you let me worry about it? Come on, hurry up, Ma. Well, I'm tying him up as fast as I can. You ought to be ashamed of yourself, forcing your mother to hide you from the police. Clam up, will you, sister? Do me a favor. Don't be ashamed of yourself. It's too bad about you about the money. Look, what's too bad about having a suitcase with over ten grand in it, huh? What's too bad about it, I ask God, tell me. I was thinking about the taxes. Virginia. The taxes? <laughs> oh, you kill me, kid. I don't pay no taxes. You'll change your tune when the Bureau of Internal Revenue gets after you. I ought to know. You're crazy. Bank robbers don't pay no taxes. Well, it's income, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, but it's illegal. I stole it. Virginia, don't waste words on him. I and the young lady are talking. <laughs> you know, there has been a lot of talk about this income tax rap lately. You bet there has. They're getting stricter all the time. But look, I can't declare no stolen income. They'd have me cold. Well, of course. You wouldn't say it was stolen. You'd have to think of something else. Yeah. I could say I earned it working. That'd be true. <laughs> yes, but... Um... But then you'd have to put it down as a personal income. Virginia, really. Knock off. Hey, look, what's wrong with putting it down that way, huh? It's expensive. On $10,000, you pay a personal tax of over 20%. Better than $2,000. Two grand? Oh, I ain't giving the government no two grand. That's the law, Buster. Two grand. I'm in the wrong business. <laughs> Ralph, a car just pulled up across the street. Get away from the window. Let me see. Yeah, only one guy in it. Cop's going over to talk to him. Oh, do you think I... I don't know. I don't look, get my suitcase. Bring my coat, too. Ralph, you can't leave in broad daylight. Do like I tell you. I'll go out the back. Cop can't be two places at one time. Pretty risky if you ask me. Who asked you? <laughs> look, I had nothing but trouble with you, Dame, since you got here. Two grand yet. You could probably shave that a little if you worked on it. I ain't paying him a dime, and you keep your mouth shut, see? Oh, Ralph, the car's pulling away. Eh, it's probably just some clown asking directions. Well, I'm leaving, Ma. Oh, uh, here. I want to give you some dough. No, Ralph. I don't want that kind of money. Look, will you take it? I'm telling you. Say, if you can get her to take $600, you can claim her as an exemption. <laughs> oh, now look, you shut up. Ralph. Ralph, I want you to leave that gun here with me. Are you kidding, Ma? Oh, you can get away without a gun. If you have it, you might use it. Oh, I'd never forgive myself. Oh, uh, suit yourself here. Uh, give me half an hour, then you can let these kids go and call the cops. Where are you heading for, Ralph? Mexico? Yeah, I thought it'd be nice of sunshine. No! <laughs> the other way I'm going. Now, shut up. Don't forget, you can write off the cost of the trip as a business expense. Look, you, quiz kid. I ain't paying no taxes. Now, you understand? I ain't paying no taxes. You won't have to where you're hey, going, Who's that? Don't Dad, move, Ralph. Daddy! There are two plainclothesmen covering you through the side windows. Hey, how'd you get in here? The back door was unlocked. You better get your hands up. Those boys outside are a little nervous. You got I, my message. You bet I did, sweetheart. Rick, I felt awful about telling Mrs. Dobler not to give it to you, it's but I... It's all right, Judy. When Mrs. Dobler told me you'd called at the house looking for Ginny, it wasn't very hard getting the rest of the story out of her. This kid belongs to you, huh, mister? That's right, Burris. Looks like she put one over on you, doesn't it? She should ought to be in school like other kids her age. Oh, don't worry. She will be from now on. I'll see to that. You bet she will. Jenny, how'd you like to have a permanent truant officer around the house? Oh, I'd like that. Do, do you mean that, Jenny? Why, of course I do. What's more, it adds to my prestige. Your prestige? Mm-hmm. Now this makes five truant officers I put out of circulation. <laughs> The 
this is Bill Gargan again. I think we can agree that it took a lot of courage for Virginia, in the charming little story we've just heard, to be instrumental in capturing Ralph. You see, the little lady took advantage of a very slight clue. The fact that Ralph's mother ordered two dozen eggs instead of one dozen. Well, we know that in every detective story, every mystery story, and every mystery in real life, for that matter, has got to provide some kind of a clue if that mystery is going to be solved. In the case of crime, in fact or in fiction, the best detective in the world would be helpless without some clue, some giveaway, some indication of what, who, or where. And for a long time, it's been my slant that life is like that. Some people call it a mystery. They're right if they mean there's plenty we don't understand. But they're wrong if they mean we don't know what life's all about. Because the author of life has left us so many clues. Clues all over the place. And not to baffle, but to encourage us. The truths of religion, the smile in the face of a young mother, the innocence of childhood, the beauty of a sunset, the justice as well as the beauty of nature, the compassion and goodness deep down somewhere in every human heart. What are these but clues? In fact, they're practically a mirror of divine and uncreated beauty and goodness. But so many of us in our busy lives miss these clues and miss the whole point of living. And that, I think, is why Family Theater, week after week, reminds us to contact this divine goodness, who is our Heavenly Father by means of prayer, and especially in these times by family prayer. Because Family Theater knows, with a lot of experience, that this is just as true today as it was a hundred years ago. The family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you 10 O'Clock Scholar, starring Gigi Perot. William Gargan was your host. Others in our cast were Virginia Gregg, Irene Tedrow, Gail Bonney, Howard Culver, Jack Crucian, and Howard McNear. The script was written by John T. Kelly, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman, and was directed for Family Theater by Joseph F. Mansfield. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program, by the mutual network which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear in our Family Theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony LaFrano expressing the wish of Family Theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home. Family Theater will not be heard next week, but will be heard two weeks from today. Join us, won't you? <laughs> Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. Today's program is transcribed. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Thank you.